Today's lesson is down to Bean Town. Hi everybody, I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And today we're going to be traveling to Bean Town. That is a nickname of the city of Boston in the United States. Maybe you've heard of this city. It's an historic city, and it's an old city in the U.S. And there are lots of things to see and do in good old Boston. Yes, Bean Town is the nickname of Boston, which is in Massachusetts. And the name refers to a popular regional dish of Boston's. It's、uh, Boston baked beans. It's a dish of beans baked in molasses, which is a liquefied version of sugar. And Boston was evidently very famous for this dish, for Boston baked beans. And as the story goes, that's how the city got its nickname, Bean Town. Indeed. So that's a nickname for Boston, and of course, there kind of is a rivalry between Boston and New York City for various things, especially in baseball, which we'll get to later on in our lesson. But today, in our travel unit for the month of November, we're going to Boston, Massachusetts. So let's do it. We're going to Bean Town. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson and introduce Boston to you. Down to Bean Town. Welcome to Boston, the urban heart of New England. Located on the northeast coast of the U.S., the city is known for its colonial history, thriving art scene, passionate sports culture, and strong local accent. Visitors should start in the historic downtown, where they will be transported back in time as they step onto the cobblestone streets. 大家好，第一部分我们看到单字 colonial， 这个字是形容词，指殖民地的或是殖民主义的。例如 ，That neighborhood is known for its colonial architecture。那个邻里以其殖民时期的建筑闻名。或是 ，British and French colonial influences lingered in a number of East Asian countries。英国和法国的殖民影响在东亚好几个国家持续留存。接下来我们看到单字 thriving。这个字是形容词，指蓬勃发展的或是繁荣的。例如 ，The neighborhood has a thriving art scene。这个社区的艺文活动发展蓬勃。或是 ，The small town was once a thriving mining community。那个小镇曾是一个繁荣的采矿社区。另外，补充这个单字的动词 thrive，t h r i v e，thrive， 指生长茂盛、繁荣或是兴旺。我们可以说。These plants thrive in a warm environment. 这些植物在温暖的环境中长得很茂盛，或是 mosquitoes thrive in warm, humid climates. 蚊子在湿热的气候下繁殖旺盛。So let's jump right into Bean Town. Welcome to Boston. The urban heart of New England, located on the northeast coast of the U.S., the city is known for its colonial history, thriving art scene, passionate sports culture, and strong local accent. So that's a lot of stuff that we have to get to know about Boston. Well, first of all, Boston, where is it located? It's located in New England. Now, New England is a term that refers to the northeastern United States. And this part of the United States includes Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, which is where Boston is located. These states together are known as New England, and Boston itself is known for its colonial history. So, colonial history refers to a time in history when the United States. Wasn't the United States yet? It was just a bunch of colonies or areas that were still controlled by the British government. As you know, Europe had lots of colonies all over the world. Hong Kong used to be a British colony. Most countries in Africa were at one time colonies of European countries. And of course, here in Taiwan,、uh, Taiwan was a colony of Japan 
from 1895 to 1945. So anything having to do with a colony is colonial. We use that word as the adjective. And of course, Boston has a lot of history because lots of things happened there when the United States was a colony of England. Yes, and Boston also has a. Thriving art scene. So, if something is thriving, it means that it is very successful. Thriving comes from the verb to thrive, which means to be healthy and happy. So, Boston has a thriving art scene, which means that the art scene, the galleries, and the artists who work there, performers, musicians, they're all working very well and having a lot of success in Boston, which. Probably is a city that cares a lot about promoting the arts. So, Boston is famous for its colonial history, for its thriving art scene, and also its passionate sports culture. As Roger had mentioned before in the introduction, Boston is a place where baseball is very important, the sport of baseball, and strong local accent. So, if you go to Boston, you'll realize that the people there speak English in a very Special way, an accent is a way of speaking that shows where you come from or what social class you belong to. Exactly. So, of course, they got their strong local accent, which basically means they don't pronounce the ahs. They don't pronounce the letter a、ah, or the letter r. I should say it's non-rhotic. I believe that's what that、uh, refers to. But of course, lots of places don't really pronounce the r's, like in England or New York. They don't really pronounce the r so much. But、uh, it is a strange accent. Accent. I was there with、uh, some friends one time many years ago, and uh, someone uh, said something to us. It was a construction worker or something like that, and we looked at each other and we thought, "What the heck did that guy just say to us?" He was telling us that the train was not running, that we'd have to take the bus or something like that. But yes, it was a very strong local accent, and I suppose you need to take some time to get used to it. Yes, and if you ever visit the United States, which is a very big country, you'll realize that there are many regional accents. So if you go down to Mississippi to Louisiana, you'll hear the Southern accent, and if you're up in New England, that's a particular accent. Then there's the Midwestern. Accent, which is the accent that many people have in places like Chicago, for instance, which they say. Well, some people have said that it, it's the most correct way of speaking American English, but that's also that has been debated. So, in any case, if you're going to visit Boston, visitors should start in the historic downtown, where they will be transported back in time as they step onto the cobblestone streets. Exactly. So, of course, if you're a visitor going to Boston, you'll probably drive your car there, and you'll need to park it somewhere. And、uh, people will ask you where you're going to park your car, so you can respond by saying, "I park my car in Harvard Yard." Okay, that's how you say it in the Boston accent there, because you drop all the R's there. But in any case, if you drive or fly there or whatever, you can start in the historic downtown area, and you'll be transported back in time because there are lots of cobblestone. Stone streets there. Cobblestone streets are streets that are made with stones or bricks. Okay, so yes, indeed, in Boston you'll see a lot of brick streets there. That means they're old, and it's kind of cool to be on those kinds of streets because they're the kinds of streets that they had many hundreds of years ago. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's continue now to the second part and find out more about Boston. The best way to take in the area sights is to walk the 2.5-mile-long Freedom Trail, starting from Boston Common, the oldest public park in the country. Following brick markers along the sidewalk, you'll encounter 16 significant landmarks, including Faneuil Hall, which has served as a marketplace since 1742 and was the location of the first protest against the British government's heavy taxes. 第二部分，我们看到单字 encounter， 这个字是动词，指巧遇、邂逅或是遭遇。例如 ，Bridget and I first encountered each other at the gym, and we've been good friends since. 我和 Bridget 一开始是在健身房偶遇彼此，从那之后，我们就一直是好朋友。或是 ，Doug encountered many interesting people on his trip through China. Doug 在游历中国的旅程中，偶遇很多有趣的人。接着我们看到单字 marketplace， 
。这个字是名词，指市场或是市集。举例来说 ，Meg goes to the nearby marketplace for groceries every week. Meg 每个礼拜都去附近的市场买杂货。又或者说 ，The marketplace is a great option to kill some time. 市集是消磨时间的好地方。So you're in Boston. You're in the historic downtown area of Boston. Where do you begin? How do you begin to take in everything that Boston has to offer? Well, the best way to take in the area sites or to experience it, to get to know it, to take it in, is to walk the 2.5 mile long Freedom Trail, starting from Boston Common, the oldest public park in the country. So the best way to experience Or to take in Boston's historic downtown is to walk along a trail, this road or this street that is 2.5 miles long, and it's known as Freedom Trail. And if you start from Boston Common, which is the oldest public park in the country, you can proceed from there and see some other interesting sites. Yeah, I think I remember this.、Uh, we took a family trip to Boston when I was maybe six or seven years old, so I vaguely remember this Freedom Trail. There were these markers on the sidewalk with various numbers, and then those numbers would indicate historic landmarks. So yes, you can follow those brick markers. Along the sidewalk, and then you'll come across or encounter 16 significant landmarks. So to encounter something again means to come across something, to find it. And a landmark, of course, is something that you can see in a place and you can identify it. And also, it's kind of representative of that place. The most obvious landmark in Taipei, of course, is Taipei 101. But you can think of other landmarks in other cities in Taiwan. They're usually large buildings, but not necessarily. Right. Right. So, if you follow these brick markers along the sidewalk along Freedom Trail, you will come across or encounter 16 significant landmarks, including Faneuil Hall. That's one of the 16 significant landmarks or building structures that are easily recognizable as belonging to Boston. And what is Faneuil Hall? Well, it's a building that has served as a marketplace since 1742. So, a marketplace. Is a place where goods are sold outdoors. It's like a public market, and this has been around. Faneuil Hall has been around since 1742. That's quite a long time, and it was the location of the first protest against the British government's heavy taxes. So that is a situation that gave rise to. America to the fact that America, the United States, is an independent country today. The fact that America at that time was very much against the British government and the taxes that it was imposing on the American colonies. Yep, I remember the phrase "taxation without representation." So, indeed, that's one of the causes of the American Revolution. So, again, that's where a protest took place, and they were saying nasty things. About the King of England. Hey, quit、uh, charging us those taxes and not let us have representatives in Parliament. That's just not fair. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's talk about some more landmarks in good old Boston. The Hall and nearby Quincy Market are still home to shops, bars, and restaurants. So they provide the perfect opportunity for visitors to sample local fare and pick up souvenirs. After ending the trail at the site of the first major Revolutionary War battle, head to the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, where you can learn more about the colonists' quarrel with British rule and find out about Boston's key role in founding the U.S. 第三部分我们看到单字 souvenir。这个字是名词，指纪念品或是伴手礼。像是 When Kylie went on vacation, she bought a lot of souvenirs for her friends at home. Kylie 去度假时买了很多纪念品给她家乡的朋友。或是 There are many shops near here that sell souvenirs like mugs and T-shirts. 这附近有很多卖马克杯和 T-shirt 之类等纪念品的商店。最后，我们看到名词 quarrel， 指争吵、不满或是不和。
。例如 ，Even the best of friends will have a quarrel from time to time。就算是最好的朋友，有时候也不免会有争吵。或是 ，The brothers had a quarrel over who would get to play the computer game first。这对兄弟为了谁先玩电脑游戏而吵架。另外，这个字也可以做动词，意思是争吵或是吵架。例如 ，Frank and Jessica often quarrel with each other, but they always make up afterwards. Frank and Jessica 经常争吵，但事后总是会和好。或是 ，Sam often quarrels with his wife about money after getting married. Sam 结婚后常因为钱的问题和妻子发生争吵。So walking further, you'll pass Daniel Hall and nearby Quincy Market. And the Hall and nearby Quincy Market are still home to shops, bars, and restaurants. So they provide the perfect opportunity for visitors to sample local fare and pick up souvenirs. So this area obviously is very good for visitors because if you want to see Boston, experience everything that it has to offer, try its food, and pick up some objects to bring home as Souvenirs to give to friends or to keep yourself. This is the place to be. A souvenir, of course, is something that you buy while you're on holiday to remind you of the fact that you are in that place. So, for instance, if you went to Paris, you might get a little statue of the Eiffel Tower so that when you go home and you put the little statue on your table on your mantle, you can remember. Oh yes, I remember that trip to Paris. How much fun it was. That's right. So, of course, if you、uh, travel to other countries, you want to buy some souvenirs to remind you of your trip there. And yes, indeed, Quincy Market is home to lots of things. So, this is the phrase to be home to here, which means the place is famous for these various things. For example, I could say Hualien is home to Taroko Gorge, or Pingdong is home to Kending, which is a famous beach area. Etc. Etc. So of course, Quincy Market has lots of shops and bars. It's famous because of those things, and it gives you a chance to sample the local food. You can try some local dishes like Boston baked beans and pick up some souvenirs. Now, after ending the trail at the site of the first major Revolutionary War battle, head to the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. Where you can learn more about the colonists' quarrel with British rule and find out about Boston's key role in founding the U.S. So yes, during the Revolutionary War or the American Revolution, there were a number of battles that took place in Boston. Probably the most famous one was Bunker Hill. But there, of course, was also the Boston Tea Party and Lexington and Concord, which are nearby cities around Boston. But、uh, yes, indeed, you'll see a place that commemorates the first war battle of the Revolutionary War, and you can go to a museum there. And there are some ships there, the Boston Tea Party ships, which is where I guess they dumped a bunch of tea in the harbor there because、uh, Britain was imposing taxes on tea and stuff like that. So they had the Boston Tea Party, of course. But of course, a person who lives in a colony is a colonist, and the colonists at the time were angry with British rule. They were quarreling with them. They were arguing with them. Right. So, if you really want to know about American history and also about the Revolutionary War, a good place to be is Boston because Boston was really at the center of this quarrel. Boston, being a port city, it、uh, was a center for trade. So, a lot of the goods that were coming from Great Britain into America and going from America to Great Britain, vice versa, had to pass through Boston. So, it was really a key city during that whole conflict. And of course, the Boston Tea Party—it wasn't a party. They weren't having a party and drinking tea.、It、refers to an event that happened in 1773 when a group of colonists went out into the harbor and they basically went to this cargo ship that belonged to Great Britain that carried tea, and they climbed aboard this ship and they dumped. 
300 big boxes of British tea into the harbor because it was their way of protesting the fact that they didn't want this company to control the way they bought and sold tea. They wanted more independence commercially, and they didn't want to be controlled economically by the British government. Indeed, and because America at the time was a British colony, or at least there were 13 colonies there, which are now the original 13 states, they were probably drinking a lot of tea because at the time the British preferred to drink tea to coffee. Nowadays, I understand that it's about half and half in England. Half people prefer coffee, half of the people there prefer tea. And they tend to like black tea, like a Earl Grey tea, but I'm sure there are other kinds. And you can bet that the kind of tea that was dumped into Boston Harbor was not oolong tea. It was probably black tea or Earl Grey tea. So they probably had a great party there. Hopefully, they served scones during the festivities. Okay, that brings us to the end of our first lesson on Boston. Let's、uh, now listen to our Chinese teacher. Good students, everyone. Hello, I'm Hanny. We're going to look at today's grammar points. 波士顿位于美国东北岸。那么课文第一部分第二句写到说，这座城市以殖民历史、蓬勃发展的艺术圈、热情的运动文化以及浓厚的地方口音而闻名。好，文中它是用到 the city is known for 点点点来表达这座城市以什么闻名。Known 就是形容是已知的、知名的。我们来学习它的相关句型。那么第一种就是课文的用法 ，be known for 什么什么，是表达以某个特色啊、特质或是成就等等而闻名。举例来说 ，The town is known for its hot springs。那个城镇呢，以温泉闻名。第二个句型是 be known as， 它是说以某个名称啊、身份等等而为人所知，可以表达被称作是什么。后面接的名词啊，通常是个身份、职业、称号等等。举例来说。Shinju is known as the windy city. 大家都知道新竹被称为风城。好，那么第三个句型是 be known to 加上原形动词，是表达已知会做某事，以做某事来出名。举例来说 ，She is known to be a snob. 大家都知道她是个势利眼的人。接着读到第二部分的第一句。欣赏这一区景色的最佳方式就是漫步那一条长 2.5 里的自由之路。好，文中他用到 take in 来表达欣赏、参观。我们可以用 take in something 来表达欣赏景色、参观景点等等。例如 ，They took in several museums on their trip to New York. 他们去纽约旅行时参观了好几座博物馆。我们顺便补充 take in 的其他用法。第一个呢，可以表达摄取、吸收，也可以用来表达像讯息、资料啊、资讯、知识等等的理解、吸收，像是。Eric had a hard time taking in the professor's lecture. Eric 难以理解那一位教授的授课内容。好，那么第二个用法是可以表达提供住所、收容、收留，就把他带进来的那种感觉嘛。那他也可以表达警察把人带到警察局的意思。那我们来造个例句 ：She took in the stray puppy without a second thought. 她想都没想就直接收留了那一只流浪小狗。好，那么第三个我们可以用 take in 来表达欺骗、愚弄某人。好，这时候常常会用被动语态 be taken in by somebody 来表达被某人给骗了。像是 Jill was taken in by a man who said he was collecting money for a charity. Jill 他被一位说要替慈善机构募款的男子给骗了。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Colonial. This city was an important trading center in colonial times. Thriving. Westport was once a thriving community, but few people live there now. Accent. I could tell by her strange accent that she wasn't from around here. Encounter. On her way home from the park, Sue encountered an old friend. Landmark. Kelly visited several famous landmarks during her trip to Kolkata. Souvenir. 
Paula bought herself a colorful rug as a souvenir of her time in Peru. Quarrel. I have no quarrel with the decision that the company made. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you, you next time. time.